Welcome to episode 76 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues, Guns. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message of all your freedom all the time. And Dad represents the delivery. Recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many topics and applying it to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local Libertarian City Council candidate Jerry Rohrbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb, or just Tubb. Pastor Tubb, a father of three, shares the same vision I do when it comes to communicating liberty. Prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for season three of the Liberty Dad podcast in Liber- is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode will focus on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from a book, Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed about how libertarians view guns. With that, let's dive right in. All right, everyone, we are back, and today we're talking about guns, every libertarian's favorite topic. So let's start off. Remember, we're going through this book, and here's what it says in the book. And remember, each topic that we're going through, all 25 of them, has devoted only a single paragraph mm-hmm. for which we are expounding on it in, in, in this podcast series. Well, then we'll make one paragraph be 40 minutes. That's right. We're right. just going to bloviate <laughs> okay. yep. until you are like, wow, these guys just yap. <laughs> like, they just right? keep talking. Like, I can learn everything I need in the first five minutes of their episode. <laughs> but here's what it says. Hunting is not the issue. The right to bear arms was intended to provide people the capacity to protect themselves, whether it's from criminals or from a government that attacks its citizens. Contrary to what you hear, crime actually drops when gun ownership increases. Libertarians respect the right of citizens on private property, uh, the, the right of citizens to hunt on private property where owners allow it. So that's all that it says. So let me kind of walk, let's let's open it up by saying this, <clears throat> and this is this is my thoughts on the matter, okay. just kind of like a summary. All right. Owning yourself means that you alone have the freedom to decide what, if any, aggression that you accept against you. You might choose to engage in, say, a martial arts tournament where you or your opponent can win by a knockout. If you decide against engaging in any form of aggression, you are free to protect yourself with force, even deadly. Because you alone can make these decisions, you alone can decide which tools you prefer to use. That could be your fist, a bat, a knife, a firearm, or some other tool. And if I create a tool that you would like to use, since you own yourself and the things that you have acquired from your labor and your services, then you are free to trade those, um, whatever your property is, whether it's money or some object, in exchange for one of my tools that maybe I have created. So where are we going? Okay. All right. So like I mentioned, I said this would probably be brief for us because right. we're libertarians and guns is pretty simple. And the fact that I think we tend to agree, I don't think it, I don't think we have any huge disagreement on this one. I don't think I don't right. see this one ramping up or anything. Um, I, I kind of fall under the area that what he's saying, like, yeah, you know what? You know how I feel about when we, I th- in some way or another, because we are libertarians. It's going to get brought up almost in every podcast, right. everything that we do. Right. It's going to come up. And, and so um, I kind of fall in line. Now, so what I kind of did for mm-hmm. this section was kind of brought questions. I would like to bring questions like, okay, that we can kind of discuss and go back and forth a little bit. Right. So I have some of that. So here's the thing. Is there a difference in the argument of, because I realize it's out there, the argument is out, out there, um, in the difference of personal protection versus a militia as okay. it's presented? Okay. Okay. Um, I did realize that there is actually, was it uh, D.C. versus Heller in 2008, the Supreme Court kind of weighed in, and this is how they phrased it. The Second Amendment protects individual right to possess firearm unconnected with service and militia and to use for traditionally lawful purposes, such as self-defense in the home. Right. So they kind of did, the Supreme Court kind of chimed in and said, okay, listen, we're kind of okay with this going mm-hmm. to the level that it's at. But the argument is still out there because, you know, we can go back and forth about Supreme Court decisions. Right. Uh, but the argument is still out there. Is it valid for personal protection versus what it almost seems like it's intended as is a militia. Right. And 
We really want to look at the way the Constitution is written. It's kind of what it's saying, what you already read and what you talked about was against the government. Right. To keep them from infringing on us. Right. So let's start with that then. Do, do you, Clearly, I'm, we're probably in agreement that it's not just a government thing. Right. Okay. And I tend to think that it's, it's more than just a government thing okay. because um, I own myself. Mm -hmm. Therefore, because I own myself, I have the right to protect myself from any threat, no matter where it's, what its origin. Okay. So whether the origin is a neighbor that wants to break into my home or whether it's the military that wants to come and take my home. Right. You know, for instance, we have the, I believe it's the um, Third Amendment, which does which prevents quartering of soldiers, right? Like this is a property issue. Yep. Um, I, may, I may have that wrong. Hey, that's okay, keep going. That's what I'm going to... I think that's the third one. Okay. Um, because the fourth one is illegal search and seizure. So I think number three, or maybe it's number five. No, five is the uh, right to um, not incriminate yourself, mm -hmm. right? The right yes. to, to, yep. to be quiet, basically. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, th I think it's number three. And so I look at it and say the right of self-defense is for any purpose, right? It doesn't specifically state it in the Constitution as, hey, this is a right to self-defense against your neighbor if they so choose to break right. in or if they come over and they're swinging their gun at you wildly, you know, like it doesn't, it doesn't go into that. It doesn't even allude to that. Right. But I think that's, that's kind of part of it because think of it this way. If you can, if the framers wrote it so that you could defend yourself against a tyrannical government, uh -huh. it would be absurd if you couldn't protect yourself against a tyrannical neighbor. Like tyranny is tyranny. And so I kind of look at it and say, well, if we're allowed to protect ourselves from the worst possible tyranny, Right. Then we can protect ourselves right. from the least possible. Uh, is, that a, is that a jump we should take? It's kind of the idea if I, okay, listen, if I told my son, hey, you can take the car, but you can only go to the mall, you got to come back home. And he right. says, well, yeah, I went to the mall, but I stopped at this store on the way and like that. And you go, whoa, 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 no, no, no. I told you it's for this. Right. Just because you've made a good argument that, well, this store is on the way right. and I want to get this. You can make the argument, right. but this was the intent. Um, Do we follow that? Now, I want to I, I make it very clear. I'm still with you in this one. Sure. And then, but I think the um, argument's there. Yeah, I think I, I, I think a better analogy is... Oh, oh so now my analogy is the problem? <laughs> well, yeah, I, made I'm a just good saying one. That, that they intended it for this, and because you can make an argument that right. this applies also, Right. Wh when do we get to say, no, I like the, I, it applies here too? Well, I, I think it, it's more uh, if you're allowed to travel in the state. Like if you tell your son, hey, you know what? I'm going to give you the keys of the car, and you can go anywhere you want mm -hmm. in the state of Florida. And then that would include going to your friend, his friend's house, right? Like, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you've kind of given him this broad, and then in that broad, um, uh, that broad range, it covers ranges beneath it. And, you know, and, and maybe I'm... they make it broad when they said uh, militia? Uh, just stay with the militia part. It's right. Like, this is to form an arm. So that would, that would depend on um, how the framers understood it at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. And maybe, uh, and we, you know, we'd have to go back and really look at a lot of the writings from so them do we take to determine this, do we take whether or not anarchist belief then to just throw it all away and start over. Well, again? no, because I mean, that's, so, that's, that's the road that no. this could turn down. If you, no. the, the, if you start saying that the Constitution didn't do a well enough job right. or when they wrote it, it didn't do a well enough job to protect itself. Right. Well, I think for starters, the Constitution was written to protect the people from the government. Most definitely. Right. It was yep. it was a um, set of rules that said, here are the limits government, government. period. Yes. Very explicit limits. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, um, there is no, nothing in there that says the government has the authority to prevent me from protecting myself against an unruly neighbor. Right. And the founders were very clear when they wrote the Constitution that... Um, um, I'm trying to remember wh where it is that I want to go with this, but th th I think there's a particular uh, portion about enumerated. Um, uh, but I, I'm drawing a blank on it. I, I'm, for some reason, it's just escaping me at the moment. But but I think I think ultimately, if you really want to make it super simple, mm -hmm. we could just do it this way. We could say this gave the government its explicit boundaries, and it also gave yes. the, the government what they can do. Right. And nowhere in there does it t touch upon defending yourself against your neighbor, right? So right. the government has neither uh, – th there is no purview under it whatsoever. And, but I, I, and if 
the government doesn't have that authority explicitly given it to him, then they don't have that authority. Well, no. In fact, that's pretty clear as far right. as constitutional wise. If the, right. if the federal government doesn't have it implicitly given to it, we go right. back to the states and, again. And and this is this is of course disregarding any you know any laws since then. I'm, I'm literally yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, only I, talking I, about the constitution and, and, as I read it. Right. And and the thing is this is that I, every time anything like this, I don't care if it's in the church, I don't care if it's here. I always feel like I gotta give this disclaimer. I am still very much on the side of right personal protection. I have the right to defend me, myself right. and my belongings. And so I'm not straying from that, but the argument's out there of this other side of it. Right. Now, here's what I wanted to ask. Um, okay, if we wanted to look at it, does the 14th Amendment come into this? With the 14th Amendment, the portion that I'm referring to, um, all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and the states wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce a law which abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens in the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, uh, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. I throw this at you for a reason. Okay. Okay? It's kind of leading to my next question, really. Okay? Uh, what about, how do we feel about a concealed carry permit? I think that uh, the government doesn't have, it, it's tricky. I don't... I, I look at things and I say there is what I believe, and then there the environment that we have. Okay. Okay. So I make this distinction because what I believe has dependencies on other things. So I look at it and I say the government really doesn't have the authority to say that I can't own a firearm. Right. That means, like, say, right now, felons cannot own a, cannot own a firearm. I don't believe that the government actually has that right to do to to make that okay. that, that um to to make that restriction. Um, however, where we are now, the government already kind of it, it's, it's, there. it's enshrined in this law yep. that most people agree with you know, on some level. Right. And so that's what we have to work with. So let me let me extend this out then. OK, for the permit area. Mm -hmm. OK, because it's kind of what I'm getting at here is, OK, so we have uh, reciprocal laws. Mm -hmm. OK. And you have certain states like I, I'll be honest with you, a lot of times if I'm going somewhere, I will base my vacations and stuff like that based mm -hmm. off of where I can carry my gun to. Right. Like, I'm just going to be honest. I, right. like, there's a certain level I go, OK, I go to Delaware and I'm done. Right. And, you know, stuff along those lines. So here's what I'm getting at. 14th Amendment there that no state can get in the way of. So do you think that the fact that we can't have a permit and, and let me just tell you, maybe I make a stand that's kind of opposite of libertarians i don't mind the idea of a permit it doesn't I, like I, I don't get worked up over it's not something I'm right. like, oh you know now i i do believe that the the way that we have to go through it and the process and everything the renewal i think that's absurd right um i think that the cost should be how much does it cost you to make this card right you, you know but more importantly here's what i'm getting at is we should be allowed to it should be kind of this universal thing across this country that says because no state can get in the way of this right. that i should be able to take my florida issue permit and carry anywhere in this country that i want to right so where do we sit on that one? Because we don't have that freedom right now. We right. don't have, like, I can't go back right. home to Connecticut and just keep my gun on me and go about right. my business. So the way I look at it, I say, well, we have a constitution that covers all the 50 states. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, the Second Amendment is in that constitution. So therefore, I have that right. So I believe that when you when you have this permitting process or when you have limitations, um, say felons or, you know, somebody who's maybe mentally insane, and I know it's going to sound crazy, but when you have those limitations, um, at least some of them I have a problem with. Okay. Right. Now, if, if we said, hey, this person has is legitimately crazy and, and they really don't belong owning a firearm. Right. Uh, I, would, I, I, itself, I would probably right? concede to that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Because we're, we're talking about somebody who's a danger at any given time, yeah. all the time, effectively. We right? just wait to be cautious and, in that what determines that and dictates. And that. I would say this person really can I if somebody's legitimately crazy, then mm -hmm. I'm gonna say they probably cannot consent in the way that they need to. Okay. Right. So so they can't um they can't consent to me selling them a firearm because they don't they, they may they you know they, they ooh, I'm gonna get myself in a lot of trouble with this one. <laughs> but, is uh, this where I should be I should kinda interject go right. but no but what I'm saying though is I'd right, right. be allowed to take my gun right. throughout so, the country. If it were my utopian okay. paradise. I would say that there would be no laws that would stop us from um, from, from owning a firearm. Okay. There would be no right. laws that say, hey, in Florida, you can carry your firearm, open carry, concealed carry, but here in Alabama, you cannot, right? Like, I, I, like ideally, that's how it would, how, how it would sit with me. So because you have a constitution that says, I have the right to self-defense, and that means I have the right to defend myself with whatever tool that I choose. Now, in the current environment, I'm willing to accept 
some limitations. The reason I'm willing to accept some limitations is because the utopian environment would be an indifferent would be an entirely different situation where people would understand like the whole entire country would understand this is the environment that we live in so everybody would inter interact and engage differently right they engage in a particular way right now mm -hmm. you and me and everybody that we run across we engage with each other under the presumption that certain laws exist right so I look at it and say, because that's the environment that we have, because that's how people that's how people are consenting with me. Mm -hmm. Right? They are consenting right. that I don't have, you know, um a certain, you know, ex you know, I don't have my yard booby trapped. Right. Right. With 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 explosive, like with landmines. People are in, you know, but in theory, yes, you should be able to. It's your property. You should be able to put landmines land right. all over it. But because people largely believe that, hey, you cannot have a landmine, you cannot put them in your yard, then they're going to interact with me on, under Based that on the presumption. premise of, we don't have landmines in your yard. Correct. Right. So similarly with the idea of having a license, the idea behind a license mm -hmm. is that um, somebody understands the proper use of it. So the license is what's helping drive the interaction with people, right? You have a license. Mm -hmm. So some people will say, I don't mind if Tub comes into my home because he has a license under the presumption that the license means that you have some level of training, training and, or you're right. familiar with how to use it, yep. even though I know it doesn't mean those things. It doesn't. No, it doesn't right? at all. But that's the presumption that people are operating under. Right. And so what I say is what we need to do is, okay, fine. That's the presumption that we're working with, but we need to roll it back to the absolute bare minimum necessity. So who are the ones that, uh, so we're talking about a permit. Right. What, who, who, uh, who are the people that at a bare minimum cannot have this permit? Okay. Bare minimum. Right. I think, think people like felons, that's an easy one. And now, as a rule of thumb, most all, felons should not have one. Okay, now let, right? let's, okay, because I, I like the idea, but like I have no two. You follow me but, now? Yeah. But what I'm saying though, I want to add to, because what you brought up there, um, I believe that a felon should have the right to get these rights restored. Correct. And the problem that we run into is that they can never tell them specifically, here's what you do. And here's what's funny. You know what? I, I think many times when we have this conversation about restoring rights to felons, we tend to often focus on voting rights. Right. Like they should be allowed to go and vote. But why should gun rights not be involved? Correct. Because some people... Felonies are not necessarily violent. Right. You know what I'm saying? And there's sometimes there's these felons I would trust more than these other people right. with a gun. I mean, there's plenty of uh, former accountants who are right. felons. <laughs> exactly. And they have never harmed a single person physically. Right. And, but they embezzled a lot of money. Yeah. yeah right. You so know? you look at it. So if, if we travel down this road, because aren't these are things, if, to me, this is really where the 14th Amendment right. kind of goes along with this. It says right. that no state can get in here and interfere with this idea that right. you can't make a law against me. They said, I'm good to have this. Constitution says, I'm good to have this gun. Right. I'm going to Delaware. I'm going to Connecticut. I, I'm going. I'm, right. I don't care. You guys should not be allowed to right. stop me. Yep. And, and I think that I think there's a lot of belief that the people I speak to, right. I don't think they're against a permit. I think they're kind of like, OK, fine. You know, whatever. Like, right. I, I don't mind. Yeah. Like I said, I don't like the cost of it yep. to initially get paid like 140 bucks. Right. And I'm going to read. I'll renew next year. And I got to pay like 80 bucks or something right. like that. And to me, it should be, OK, here's your thing. It costs eight dollars yep. to make it. Here's your, my eight dollars. Yep. So um, do do we start having this argument in a sense? Do we start broadening this discussion? Not just about gun rights, because in Florida, we're pretty open. we got some freedoms. Right. Um, I, I don't have to make a big fight for Jacksonville to be gun-friendly because right. we're kind of already there. And so there are certain times, even libertarians, kind of, we're going to do this about guns. And I kind of look at it and go, eh, we're kind of okay right. here. Um, but do we have a bigger argument and a bigger fight that says, you know what, I can't go here right. when realistically I should be able to. Right. And if we agree with that, what do we as libertarians start doing to say, hey, why don't we start taking that fight? Right. I think, unfortunately, the environment that we're in right mm -hmm. now is that it has to it has to be a fight that goes to the Supreme Court that says where the Supreme Court basically comes out and says, OK, turns out after a review and some really great arguments, everybody that has a permit in any given state mm -hmm. should be permitted, um, uh, should not be obstructed uh, from going to another state and carrying their firearm under the same premise. Because the reality is, let's think about it. Let, mm -hmm. I mean, let's break this down for yeah. a moment. In Florida, Florida, the whole state of Florida has deemed me as um, uh, they have permitted me to have a concealed carry right. license. Yep. So therefore, I can go and buy a firearm. I can conceal carry it. 
What has changed if I go to a state that doesn't permit it? About me, nothing. Nothing. Nothing has changed. It's right? Even... I am the same person mm -hmm. before I crossed over that state line. So in my opinion, I should be permitted to, I should be, uh, I, I don't like to say I should be permitted. I should, I, not be, yeah. I should not be obstructed right. from being, from taking my firearm with me as I travel to some other state. Mm -hmm. Now, permits. Going back to what I was trying to get at. If we're going to, I think the word that I want to, I'm, I'm looking for, if we're going to have permitting, if we're going to have some limitations, right. it needs to be purposeful and the absolute bare minimum. So purposeful, right? What purpose does it serve to say you as a felon? Martha Stewart is a felon, no. I believe. Mm -hmm. She is, she would uh, not legally be permitted to carry. Um, so what purpose does that serve when the issue was entirely about monetary transactions for her? There was no violent crime. But hold, hold on. Right? Let's, 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 so it doesn't even make sense. Right, There's no right. purpose. It, it, so, so it's absurd on its face. Or let's say that um, everybody knows that teenagers do dumb stuff. Very much so. Let's say a teenager <laughs> does get uh, get involved in a violent crime at 17, mm -hmm. right? And Or maybe even 16. And it goes on his permanent record for a while right now, right? And so now he has this felony record. Right. Right? He might get tried as an adult and then have a felony right. record or whatever. Yep. Okay. And well, when he's 30... I would sure as hell hope that he is much different as a person yes. at 30 yep. than he was at 16. Mm -hmm. And that, and, and m most people would say, a lot of the things that I did at 16, I would not dare do now because, boy, what was I thinking? Yep. Right. And I think the same goes for, you know, potentially even violent crime. And I think that even to some degree, a, 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 a an adult who commits a violent crime can look back and say, man, that was just, that was so I can't stupid. believe I did that. Yep. What was I thinking? Right. We have to have this idea in our mind that people can be restored. Restored. Right. Otherwise, um, it's basically one and done effectively. Maybe not one. I mean, I know there's a three strikes. On, but effectively, now, it's one and done. Let me ask you a question All right, for those two things. One is, so do you not think that um, a law, which I know how we feel about that, do we, our repealing of laws, would, would it, rather than have to go to the Supreme Court, could, could this be overturned? Maybe just with a law that says, hey, okay, all of these things from um, now on. This you can have right. state resistance since it's the states that are doing it. The states are saying, right. Because you have, I think, I think Florida is reciprocal in like what, 39 states? Something like that. Yeah, it's pretty And high. so uh, you, you're, we're missing out on about 11. Mm -hmm. And um, so well, each one of those 11. Those could, 11 that I want to go to. Like, right. And, that's, and, and that, that's 11 holdouts. Yes. Right. And so that means if um, one might be willing to reconsider and then the other 10 not. But again, and so 14th, how do you, 14th Amendment. Right. So that's why I say a Supreme Court ruling would be the one in the environment that we have now. A Supreme right. Court ruling would have to go and say, hey, it turns out 10 or 11 states, um, the, the, the law that you have made is a violation of the Constitution. It's a violation of this person's basic rights. Okay. And I think that part of the basic rights should, it is that we can carry a firearm or any kind of weapon that we want for our own self-defense. Because at the end of the day, I, some person might say, you know, I'm not really comfortable handling a firearm. And they might say, I would prefer to have a taser or some right. bear mace mm -hmm. or just a stick or a, a switchblade. Right. Like there's all just any number of different weapons or they might say, hey, you know what? I don't really want to use any device. I'm just going to go ahead and enroll into a martial art class. And, then, and right. that's what I'm going to use for my self-defense. And by God, so, I hope that's enough. Let, let me. Right. <laughs> and so and, let me go. And, and that's their choice. All right. So we, we can make the argument against the government about, hey, government has mm -hmm. no right to get in the way of right. this. OK, now let's bring it smaller. Let's bring it into private businesses. Okay. Okay. Um, so there can be private businesses who say, um, we don't, in fact, you know, you go to some places and they have a sign on there and they, you know, no weapons allowed. And, right. And, um, but so what, do those ones have a right? I think so because it's their private business. It's the same as my private home, right? Okay. So the only difference between my private home and a business is that there's a transaction of money on a regular basis for a very specific thing, for a very specific purpose, mm -hmm. right? In my home, there's not that. You might come over and have some dinner, and maybe you might say, man, you went really all out. Uh, let me go ahead and give you 10 bucks for your trouble. Is that your way of telling right? me that when I come over you, for dinner, yes, I should yes. be able to throw a few bucks down? Hint, Got hint, it. Got it. wink, wink. Fair, fair right? enough, okay. So, so that so technically dinner at your house is not right. free dinner. It's right. Not, it's not, Hey, we're hanging out. It, it, this is a transaction. But, but, but that, but that might happen. It might not happen. Right. But for a business, if I go to a restaurant, mm -hmm. that is what happens. And I have agreed kind of like there, there, there isn't a formal agreement. Like there's not like a, a long checklist, but we understand 
I'm going into this business. Um, I'm going to respect their rules, whatever they are. And different businesses may have so, different rules. Nightclubs are a really good example because some nightclubs will say, you cannot wear certain attire in here or yep. it needs to be at a certain level. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're a really... Um, we're a we're a high end nightclub, and so we're only letting people in that are dressed to the hilt. Right. Other clubs might say we don't want the riffraff. So if you look like you're wearing gang clothing, anything that resembles gang clothing, you know, blue, red hats to the side, you know, I'm a crip on my shirt, like none of that's permitted, right? Wait a minute. Where are you hanging out? <laughs> These are the trouble ones. <laughs> like, like they walk around. Hey, you know I'm a crib. My side was, you know I'm a thug. Like, where are you, you hanging out? You've never out been to those clubs? <laughs> no, I, man. You know. I, I, real quick, I will tell you. That I've been to there's some actually, clubs. There's been studies that have been shown that have... Uh, showing that how you dress is how you act. Sure. And so a number of these clubs really have changed right. their their uh, dress codes. It's not because of anything right. else, because you act a different way. You're less right. apt to fight. I went to a, a uh, I went to a goth fetish nightclub once. What? Yeah, it was a goth fetish nightclub. Wait a minute. In Richmond, Virginia. Of course, because where else would they be? But more importantly, and this so this gives you your view of the Crips. No, right? no, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> Hanging you, out with these goth people, I really learned what these Crips. When are you like. walked, when you walked in, there was a big sign. And it said, here's the clothing that you're not permitted to wear. Okay. And I don't remember all. There was like a, a long list right. of things, like 10 or 12 items. And some of them were like polos. They didn't want you to wear a polo. They didn't want you to wear um, uh, anything white. Uh, so you, ha you basically had to wear like latex and black color clothes. And uh, you could wear um, fishnets and, you know, things that were kind of along. Because they had a particular environment that they were... Yes. Right. That, that they were maintaining. And if you're more willing to wear that, you're more willing to be a part of that environment. Right. And you're more likely likely to be a part of yes. it. Yes. Right? Um, and can... so I think the same would apply to a firearm. Somebody could say, look, we, for whatever reason, we're a gun-free zone. So we don't want firearms. And so a, pri a private business can, in, in, as far as I'm concerned, like a bank. A bank might have an incentive to say, hey, we don't want any firearms. We got a couple guys in here. Um, right. well, yeah, the bank. Uh, right. Personally, the bank I go to, you, right. I always you got to walk it through the thing. They don't. It's a, they got a right. whole process to yeah. keep it out. And and, and now, so in that case, I'm you know whether so, it's a bank uh, or a tailor. All right. So two things is one is I, I don't want to come to dinner here because now I hear what you do for fun. Mm -hmm. All right. I, so we're <laughs> so we're gonna leave that out. Uh, but more importantly, what what I'm about, normal now. <laughs> what about <laughs> drug 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 free? What about gun free zones? Because I often look at it and go, it's almost like a sign hanging in here. Oh, this is the place to shoot up. Right. Like, can we not see, like, here, here's my thing. Those are almost telling people, if you want a place to shoot somebody up, come here. I mean, the safest place to do it. I, I think we make a mistake in how we frame the conversation. Okay. We say gun free zone is a big neon sign that says come here. And I think we present it as if it's a very active process. What I think is more passive. I think what happens is when somebody goes to look and shoot up a place, one, they probably got some places in mind because they've got a bad experience there, right? So a lot of your shooters, they they are looking for a particular target to express their outrage about something on, right? Like people aren't just like, like I didn't, people don't grow up in a school where they got picked on and harassed and abused and then say, I'm going to go to the old folks home and shoot them up. Right, because it's an entirely different connection. So I think that yeah, but the people that we see shooting up schools tend to have that, a problem that, that with the area school. Of conflict. But, Second but, of all, it is a gun-free zone. So that it makes it kind of like they're, they, they, we've removed the cost of shooting it place up. We don't generally hear about shooting up a police station or a... Or, or the gun store. Or a gun store. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's an unwise decision. And what I've tried to tell you, and I've had arguments with people with like this, because they'll say... Oh well, the, you know, the chooser, the the shooter chose the movie place because um, he was crazy. Blah blah. I'm like, he's crazy, but he's not stupid. He has a goal in mind. I want to shoot as many people possible, or maybe he has a specific number. I want to shoot right. ten people, and after that, it's 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 after that, if I, whenever I get over, it's good. Right. Uh -huh. right. I don't know what's going on in their mind, but they have a particular goal that they're trying to achieve. Think about the Joker in Batman, right? The joke, like if you watch the more recent Batman movies. You know, the darker versions of them, right? No, I have not. Okay, so the Joker in those movies, he's crazy. He's willing to burn the whole town down for whatever goal, but he's not stupid. He's got a goal in mind. He's trying, he's laying out a plan. And we see that when we look at these shooters. We see that they've, they've generally right. laid out a plan. Like you go, they go to their house and they're like, oh my God, they've got like pictures, all all the, yeah. pictures on the wall and they've got like books and books of, you know, scribblings and but, maps but, but and I writing. Think, like they've went through all, they're not stupid. But, Right, but what I'm getting at though is it's I think crazy. that I think that 
you, once again, they're not going to the gun store. They're, right. they're not going to the police right. station for those. I, I think because, because the cost they know has been I, the cost has been removed elsewhere. Right. There's a so, cost to it. So here's what I'm getting. At. I, I I'm an advocate of. I'm gonna tell you right now. I, I believe in having guns inside the school. Right. Let me explain this out because some people go and, and, and stop and, tuning out. Come back. Come back. Yeah, here, uh, let me tell you why. Let me let me actually tell you where I tend to disagree with people. The people who agree with me about right. having a gun in the school, they're like, yeah, the teachers should have a horrible idea. Like, I do not believe teachers should have guns in the classroom. And, and the simplest argument is just that um, you run the risk. You can't of, even teach math. How right. How are you going to handle this? Uh, but more importantly, <laughs> is that what's going to happen when you can easily be overcome by 22 students in a classroom? Right. Okay. If something goes sideways, they decide they want it. The next thing you know, they take you down. They got your gun and they're right. running around the school. Uh, but I am an advocate of front office, somebody trained up around there, uh, maybe a guardian through the school to kind of, right. so that now, if nothing else, it maybe puts some doubt in the people right. who go, I'm going to go here and shoot this joint up. Maybe now they go, wait a minute, maybe I better not because I might walk in right. there and as soon as I get in there, right. they're taking me out. And, and so I, I kind of like the idea, which is why I, I make it very clear to basically anybody I ever talk to, anytime I ever, come, I make it clear, I have a gun on me. Right. And I have found that that makes people go, okay. I mean, I'm always nice to you. Yeah, right. It's not because I'm a nice I'm guy, like, but you no, never know. I might Because you may butt the cap in my ass. Exactly. <laughs> you know so, but, but I, I you are wearing blue. Yeah, I, but my shirt doesn't say. Of course, I'm wearing and my hat. I have a hat on turned to the side. I'm, I'm wearing blue too. So, so we're down today. We're in the same. Group. We are. We are. We're with no the... hats. So I don't know if we're really in the gang, but right. um, but but what I'm getting at, I think there's a level up if we say, hey, it's here. Right. Um, I always like the idea of knowing. There's guns around, right? For responsible people, right? You, and let me tell you, as crazy as this sounds, and I think about this often. Okay, so let's say somebody goes in to rob uh, a little store, you know, right. a convenience store, and there's a cop in there, and they sneak up on the cop, and the cop goes, "Okay, you know, I'm not gonna." Okay, they get their gun. I've thought this. I might be like, "Tell what are you thinking about?" I, here's what I would do, in all honesty, I would just kind of walk up to the cop and be like, "Hey, it's right here. Take mine and do what you need to do." Like, right. like that. So it's not even about me saying. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to solve this. There's no vigilante stuff inside right. of this. But it's a, you know what? Let's have them. I feel better when they're around, with, maybe right. with the responsible people, that when we know that they're there. I always say, if you go start a fight with somebody you know has a gun, you get what you right. get. So you're not going to be the guy that's leaping down the feminine hygiene aisle while he's busting not and shooting not, somebody? Not, no, I'm not that much of a thug. And then grab something to put in his wounds? Right, and and then and then go up and then pay for my things, check out my own things as I walk out. No, like I'm not going to do any of those type of things. But I I, I think that we've come to this place that once we say uh, we don't want them here, we don't. Want, or think of it this way: go into these states mm -hmm. that are very strict gun laws, because right. you know if you have more laws, clearly there's no gun crimes. Right. You know, because that that's proven throughout all. Right. Make more laws. I mean, and, Chicago and, and D.C. Perfect examples of how right. you make enough laws and everything will just fall into right. place. So I tend to like the idea of like, you know what? I should be allowed to carry mine. I'm responsible right. enough in case things ever want to go sideways. Now, along the lines of private companies, and here's why I bring this up. Um, so we'll go do things here downtown. Um, we don't tend to run in Jack, downtown Jacksonville is pretty calm. Right. You know, most of, most of the issues happen just outside of downtown. Right. Um, but it's pretty calm. There's probably not big risk of anything right. really happening. But there's times where I park here and wherever I'm going, um, they don't allow guns in. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, okay, I got to walk from here to here. Right. When the show's over, whatever it is we're doing, I got to walk back again. It's a little bit later, stuff along those lines. That's when I want my gun. Right. It's those situations when I go, okay, it's, it's not about being inside of your building. It's about, I want it from here to there and then back again. Right. And I can't. Right. And we just recently had this. Like, we went to a concert at, at the Florida Theater here, and you can't bring your guns. In fact, I've been known, I will drive past the place first to see if they're running people through metal detectors. And if they are, if they're wanding people or whatever. Right. And, and I'm like, okay, never mind. I got to go around and leave my gun here. Uh, right. So, but there's where the issue comes in. Right. I have this right. And it's not about your business that I'm worried about. It's me leaving right, your right. business that I'm worried about. Sure, sure. And this is when we lose our right. safety of gun rights. Right. So you do you oppose private businesses making that rule? I guess maybe I... I mean, I, it clearly I guess, it sounds guess, like it because you ignore it sometimes. I do. I do. I ignore it a lot. Uh, so I guess maybe what I oppose is the enforcing of it. If, okay. if I'm threatening with it, if I'm kind of, <laughs> look at me. Right. I, I believe at that point you go, hey, stupid. But I'll walk into these places. They don't know I have it. I don't like walk around going, I got a gun all the time. I don't right. wear the shirt that says I'm a crip with a gun. Like I don't right. do those type of things. Right. So I, I will tell you, 
like, oh, I'm going to be honest in, right. in that I do carry into places that maybe sometimes I've seen a sign that says, right. hey, don't bring it here. Okay. And, and um, because I, my understanding at worst, and maybe I'm wrong, I'm going to get arrested one day, but my understanding is that, dude, if they've seen, dude, you got to get out of here. You can't have that in here. Right. Okay. Here's the thing. If, if they make a big kind of no wishes, I, I don't go crazy with it. Right. Like, I, I'm not, it's not something I'm going to, you suck. I'm never, but I will then mask mandates, vaccine type of things. If you tell me I can't do this here, okay, I just won't come to your place. Right. right. You, you know, and I think that's what we're always willing, or we have to be willing to do. Right. Um, I, I can't just go, screw you, I got this Second Amendment thing and I'm right. going to do it anyway. I think I have to understand right. private person, private personal property rights. Right. Um, so like I said, I think maybe I'm more concerned with the enforcement of, I right. think it's a, put the sign out there and people come in calmly because you never know, you might need that gun in there one night. Right. Because if they think it's a place of no guns, they might come in saying, I got a free place that right. I can go in and guess what? There's somebody in there. Right. Somebody in there who goes, watch me stop what's going to happen. Here. You good with uh, open carry? Yeah, I am. What yeah. about open carry with a fully automatic machine gun? Yeah, I don't care. Okay. What about a bazooka? I mean, can I have a tank? In, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, now, I guess I have that's to... People, like, people love asking that question. Like, yeah, I know. I think I, it's an absurd one, but... It is absurd. But that's why I'm like, well, okay, but what do you do? You're like, I, I meant to look it up. the Walmart? Right. Like, what I, are we talking about here? It's I, kind I of street to, legal, I guess, right? Yeah. Well I, well, I meant to look it up and see how much like a jet fighter jet cost or a tank cost. You seen that little meme picture thing? It shows up one, like, how libertarian are you? And yeah. It like, yeah, like, yeah, the yeah. killdozer or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, yeah. And, and, and I think... I think one one of the reasons why that uh, that, that question is kind of absurd is one, it's pro, it's the cost is prohibitive already. Oh, yeah. like, like, you know, and I mean, and I get it. Government drives up the cost, so you can't just look up like an F fourteen Tomcat and say, okay, how much does that cost? That's how much it would cost me if I were about buying it. Right. right? Um, it would probably cost a lot less, but it would still cost a whole lot. Yeah. Well, well, than well, most people well, have. The government's paying for right? it. Right. Like, I'm, it's still going to be a lot but, more than most. I mean, most people can't afford to go out and buy a brand new car. So, do I really the think they're gonna, but, but like, the are they going to be able to buy a tank? But you know, Probably not. That's what really happens. People always take the argument to the extreme. Right. And so that's when I go, yeah. yeah right. You know what? And I'm not going to tell you. But like I said, I think that in return, I, I think that what's the reality? So right. can't rent a bazooka. Who's going right. to like what, whatever do. But you know what? If you have that and that's your means. Right. Okay. And and honestly, if libertarians it, had their way, mm -hmm. those things wouldn't even be a problem because um, I might own the road that goes to your house. And yeah. I might say, no tanks on my no road. No tanks on my road. And so, yeah, you can have a tank. You just can't drive yeah, it. Really how, do you, it. how are you going to get, get it to your house? Right. How are you going to leave from your house? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, because you can't get, you can't, you, you wouldn't be able to um, put, uh, but, to drive it on my property, right? But, so you'd have to figure out something. You'd have to like airlift it. I don't know, whatever. So, so you see where the, it's yeah, becoming, it's, really a, it, it's, an, it's a really absurd question yep. because the absurdity of somebody actually having one, like, yeah, okay. Somebody who's wealthy like Elon Musk, yeah, he might have one. He right? might have one right now. <laughs> right, but he might already have one. Uh -huh. You know, I don't know. And so I'm not I'm not, you know, people that can people that would be able to afford it are in, probably not the people who are, are just gonna go bust Probably the same up. people that can already afford it now mm -hmm. and, and and acquire one in some way, right? Um now would they be able to get ballistic missiles and all that? Yeah. I don't know. But again, those things cost. That's not realistic. Like, like but you start adding up the cost. 357 stuff yeah. along these lines. Hey, yeah. you, you know, realistically, because here's the thing: like it or not, um, just a couple of days ago, right. there were these kids going around stabbing each other out here, just next town over. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, five kids got stabbed. They they, they started, and they're all between the ages of ten and seventeen. They're children. Stabbed by who? Each other. Oh. Like they they came to the house and like they started fighting and so rather than call the cops or anything, the one came out and started stabbing the other one came out and started stabbing it, and like five kids got stabbed. Like so there's one like or two a of them physical died altercation like yes that. of ten through seventeen year olds stabbing each other. It ended up being like ten total. I think five kids got stabbed. I know of one. I'm pretty sure one died. Wow. Just, just in the past couple of days. So I look at this and I go, okay, so okay, let's say guns are this horrible thing and we need to get rid of them. Oh, because then what you're saying then is that all of these um like vicious crimes right. are going to stop. Right. Oh, except for there's still knives, there's still right. bats. There's well, still there was that of video of the uh, football guy. I don't remember his name. I think he was a former football player. He throwing his girlfriend. Oh, yes, his ex girlfriend. Tracy yep. something or whatever. Yep. I don't remember. His name. Yeah, yeah, I, you know. I don't follow the for the sports yeah. names. But I, 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 I saw it on Twitter, and like the dude like smacks his girl, and I'm like, okay, this is like this is not going not anywhere. Right. It's not going anywhere good. And then all of a sudden he just like he picks her up and he throws her against the Clear TV. across the room. Like. Like as easily as I could a toddler, right? Yes. Yep. Like I was just like, holy wow. Yeah, hey, you guess know? what? There's a need for a and, gun. 
And I, yeah, I was just like, you know, I hope that then, you know, if there is a next time that I, I probably won't happen, but I'm hoping that there's a next time she is armed and she uses it to the fullest extent that she can. Mm -hmm. Because if you're going to toss her, that's exactly why everybody needs a gun. And this is, but, this is one of the things that I impress upon people. I try to tell them about firearms because they're like, oh, firearms are meant to kill. I'm like, yes, yes, yes they yes, are they meant are. to kill. <laughs> and the more we realize that in the first place, then maybe the fewer shootings that we'll have accidentally, like the TSA where the guy, the guy's gun went off. There was a gun that went off at the TSA. There was the, um, um, you know, the movie set recently, yes. you know, but there, are, there, there, and there are plenty of stories of, you know, accidental. Yes, we need to recognize that guns are intended to kill. And that's, the, and so the first one is, so uh, the first reason is so that we'll handle them appropriately, but then yep. so we'll handle them appropriately, appropriately. because <laughs> that man tossed that that football player tossed that woman around like nothing, like she was a doll. Yeah, like it's true. Like, I mean, you think of, it almost looked like a bag of trash. You just yeah. like, like I'm and, like, whoa, all but, right. But but you know what? If she had a firearm, if she had a gun, and had just what a mean? few feet of distance, guess what? All the strength in the world doesn't mean, mean anything. Let me ask you a question. If he had a firearm, would he even, if she had one, would he have even gone in there and done that? Maybe not. He probably, now, I mean, ask, maybe. Some people are some pretty people brazen. Yeah, he thinks. But as a whole, people tend to go, nope. Yeah. Like, nope. But now, if you now, know that your significant other has a firearm and they will use it, if you know that, I'm like, chill. if you think that they will hesitate. Maybe that's not, the reason I don't do yeah. stupid right now at home. Well, I mean, right. real stupid. You know, you might I, shoot me. Let me ask you a question real quick because I know you want to close this section. Yeah, yeah, we're, so, we're getting time. Uh, let me ask you this then. If Frittenhouse didn't have a gun, what is he today? Uh, he would be dead probably because exactly. there was just a story just two days, two, three days ago where a gentleman, uh, where a person was killed with a, uh, with a skateboard. Yes. Oh, I saw that. Like, yep. Hey, here's your argument of, mm -hmm. oh, it's just a skateboard. Yep. But what about the fact that the guy was right there, the guy that did the job, yep. he pulled his gun on him. Right. I truly believe yep. if Rittenhouse did not have it. It gun, may have been different people. Um, because those people were following him for a reason, but it may have been different people. Yep. But uh, I think uh, had be... the same circumstances happened, people were chasing him. He was attacked by a skateboard. And I realized the argument is, oh, if he didn't have a gun, he wouldn't have shot somebody in the first place. And that might, I, I get all that. But, he... but if the yeah, actions had happened, again, but if yeah. the actions had happened, had they had played out in any way, shape or form in the way that they did, he would likely either be dead or in the hospital. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you right now, swinging a skateboard at somebody, like I, if I swing a skateboard at somebody, um, all I need is a simple good hit. And it don't take a whole lot to get that good hit. Right, right, but and they're going to be in the hospital. Here's the thing. I don't want to, I don't want to cheapen the argument to the skateboard thing. Here's what I'm getting at. The guy pulled a gun on him. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So there's a, if, well, I tr if he hadn't shot him, his, right. shot his arm, or if I remember the word he used, right. we talked about that. Okay. If he hadn't done that, that guy was probably going to shoot him that night. Right. Well, the, the ultimate reason is he, uh, people were aggressing against him. And when somebody's bringing aggression against you, you have the right to defend yourself, as I pointed out in the very beginning. Yes. You have the right to defend yourself and choose whether you want to use your fist, a knife, a billy club, or a rifle, mm -hmm. right? Like, And it, he was carrying a rifle. And I'm like, so he was very open about what he was willing to use, what he had available to him. So everybody was very, very familiar. And I think that I, I tend to believe in this notion that an armed society is a polite society. Yep. Now, that doesn't mean that things don't happen. They certainly do. We can go back to the wild, wild west. Things happened back then, and that's but what people knew, were open carrying. You knew, okay, right. if I go stare this up, this is what's fixing to happen, right. and you're willing to take that risk. You you knew that somebody, you know, the saloon owner might come out and pull out a shotgun on mm -hmm. you. You knew that Annie Oakley, before she was Annie Oakley, might pull out a gun from across the street mm -hmm. right. and blow your head off. But, those, you know, but that's that. That's a risk right. that you kind of you calculated that, that I'm down for this. Right. And, and I think that the more that we know that people have this, right. I'm like, this is a risk. Am I willing to take this right. risk? And I think that applies to, you know, shootings where there, there are no gun zones, the gun-free zones, yep. because you don't have to take a risk. Why? Because we remove the cost of taking that risk. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. You know, we, we know what the cost is if I go to a, uh, a police station and try to open <laughs> fire. I know exactly what the cost is going to be. The cost is that every single one of them that hasn't been shot, is going to pull their firearm and aim it right at me and pull the trigger. Yeah, I might not get a round off. Right. I might get a round off. I might get two. I might get a couple lucky shots because of the element of surprise. Mm -hmm. But after that, the, once the element of like, surprise is gone... Like, no matter what, this is ending now I the next the few minutes, I'm dead. Right. Like, that, that's the reality of it. Right. And, and let me just tell you, because there's actually... Because, like I've mentioned before, my wife does a ministry downtown with the homeless and stuff like that. And there's this one guy in particular. Um, he makes it very clear to everybody, I always got a gun. We kind of joke right. about it. And just yesterday, I went pulling up there and, and I, I always keep one down in my door, of course, mm -hmm. but I up there where my doors are from, I'm just with the window stuff. And he swears that every time I do like this, he'll start walking. Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> joking and stuff. But right. it's there. And like, he makes it clear. He tells others, hey, you know what? He keep one in there. And it's kind of the idea. Why do you think open carry, they, they want people to know, right. I have this right here. 
Right. And it's it, to me, what it does is it diffuses situations right. and it, it, it prevents right. crime. It makes people second guess their actions. Mm -hmm. Because when, when you lower the cost of something, people are more willing to do it. It's economics. If a candy bar costs fifty dollars, I might buy one, maybe. But if it costs fifty cents, I might buy five. Right. Or if it costs fifty dollars, right? I might because steal one. Cost to because me, I can't afford right. it. Right. Because the cost to me mm -hmm. is so low. Yeah. Right. So when the cost is low, I'm more willing to engage in a particular action. Right. So I think that's. What, um, but let, let me end on one thing, oh. and I, can, I think this is important. Now, I think now, you're going to agree. Are you ending where I say something after you're done, or you're ending? I'm and ending I'm my silent. final comments. You can have the last word. I'm done. No, good. You do what you're doing. All this right. Your show. You do it. All right. All, all right. right. I think ultimately that the reason that we have the Second Amendment is to uh, prevent a tyrannical government, because that is exactly what we fled. We left. Mm -hmm. Like people make the argument and say, "Well, well, you know, it's really for hunting." No, colonists did not flee and fight an entire war so they could have the right to shoot deer. Right. They left because they didn't like the rules. They didn't feel like they had a voice. And they came over here and they said, here, we're going to have a new place with the new rules. And we're going to have a voice. And part of that voice included, if you try to take away our voice and you try to harm us, you try to you try to violate some of these freedoms, we have the right to defend ourselves against you. prevent it from happening. Right. So... Armed society is a polite society. And now, let's get into that bill review. But I know I'll be a law someday, at least I hope and pray that I will. But today, I am still just a bill. Um, H.R. 5376, the Build Back Better Act. And this was, uh, the sponsor was John A. Yarmouth from, uh, looks like Kentucky. And he introduced this bill on 9-27-2021. So, Tub, you read this whole thing. What did, did you come up with? All right. After going through all of it. Did you I, really go through all of it? No. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> nobody did. Even the people who were voting for this didn't right. go through all of it. Right, right. All right. I, I just feel like, let me just tell you that when you sent this to me, and, and I sent you a thing back to say, all of it? Like, what are you talking about? Like, I just find your part. And I, I, I feel like even just as you're introing this, I, I feel like I, I had this look of when we do the social issues. Right. And it's just kind of hitting me. I had that same look or when you threw maps at me last week. Oh, and, and, and so I just, I, I feel like when they see this, it's going to be where I'm just like, oh, here we go. Right. All right. So I, you know what? Let's let you go first because okay. mine is a weird attack that maybe we're going to cover different things. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Let's go ahead and change up our screen a little bit. And then I'm going to take a look at something here. So here's what I found. I like talking about the meta of things. Okay. Because I find that very fascinating. So let me kind of start back. So remember the Consolidated Appropriations Act from some time ago? Let's see. I don't think I have a date on it here exactly. But there was a consolidation, the Affordable Care Act. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry. No. This was the consolidation. I'm trying to think of which bill number was what. But this was like a 5,593 page bill. And so I went through it. I like did a word count. And then I kind of calculated out some things because I thought it would be interesting just to find out like, like what goes into just putting together this bill. Mm -hmm. So in the particular bill that we're talking about, which is the Build Back Better Act, it is 19,889 words, roughly speaking. Okay. And that's excluding any numbers. So if there was any dollar figures in there that got removed as a word. Okay. So, but that All would right. be something that you would actually have to read and write. Okay. The average person reads at 300 words per minute and they write, they type at 40 words per minute, right? So now assuming for a moment that, this, that the average person reads this, it's going to take them about one hour to read this bill, roughly. Now, keep in mind... That's pretty impressive reading. Keep in mind, and I want, I want to put this bill like, up on read, the screen. I, I don't read that fast, obviously. Yeah, yeah, I want to put this bill up on the screen because I want to point out a couple things. So this is like the average reading speed, right? And this doesn't take into account um, anything that's... That, that's um, uh, any of the specifics that we've got going on. So let's take a look at this. All right, so here's the here's the bill that we've got up on the screen here. Um, HR 5376, HR is House Resolution, I believe. And um, so this is a House bill. And so as we're scrolling through, we'll just kind of, take, kind of take a look here. So you can see how it's got wide spaces. There's a lot of margin on the side. So it seems at first like, oh, you know, 2,468 pages, that wouldn't right. be so bad because there's not a lot of text on each page. It's not like a... a, a a paper that you wrote in right. high school, right? It's actually got a lot more margins and a lot more spacing. However, 
Look at this very first one, lines 7, 8, 9, and 10. It says this, the term insular area has the meaning given such term in section 1404 of the National Agriculture Research Extension and T Teaching Policy Act of 1977. And then it references um, uh, USC 7, uh, part 3103. So what that means is, you have to really kind of read this. I have over to reference to... that if I want to understand something. Yep. Because it says the term insular insular area has the meaning given here elsewhere. Yep. Go look over here. So now I got to go over here if yep. I want to know, okay, what does insular area mean in this particular bill? And so then I have to go and re reference another bill, right? And so then it goes on to line 11 and 12. It says the term secretary means the secretary of agriculture. Okay, great. I don't have to reference anything. So now I know that anytime it uses the word secretary in this bill, it means the secretary of agriculture. So I've Under that go, heading. Right. Yes, um, under that, because there are going to be things coming on that it's not... Secretary is not going to be right. referring to agriculture. Right, and, and it yes. may and it may changes it may change definitions elsewhere. Right, because but bills, for right here, right bills sometimes will say, okay, we're amending this current legislation or this mm -hmm. current law, and we're um, uh, we're changing this law, and so there may be different meanings. Uh, be, because there right. may be different reasons for yep. different meanings in different portions of the law that they're uh, that they're adjusting, right? And so, but then let's say let's get down here. So let's skip down to uh, okay. We'll skip down to section. Let's see here, subtitle B, forestry, forestry. right? And we're going to go to uh, section A, appropriations. And so then it says like uh, twenty one lines twenty one and twenty three on page three here, and it's going to say. Um, uh, let's see, is that 10 million? 10 million, no, um, 100,000 no, million, a, billion. billion. So $10 billion for hazardous fuels reduction projects within the wild land urban interface, right? So, oh, okay, so, yeah. So now I've got a, now, now if I'm, I'm, again, we're talking about reading. We're talking about reading 300 words uh, per minute. Mm -hmm. So now I might have to stop and think about this and say, okay, well, I got $10 billion being appropriated for this particular item. So then maybe I might need but to. But now I have to go look, okay, for projects, but now I'm going to have to go right. look what's a wildland urban interface. Right, right, right. Because that, that, that word doesn't mean anything. I'm, be, I'm, be, I'm reading that right now. I go, right. what are they talking about? Right, right. So maybe as we, I'm just an idiot. Right. And so, as no, no, you're going to say right there. That wasn't the time for you to say right. What I said, maybe I just, yeah, right. Okay, yeah. That's so. That's so as we're here. reading, as we're reading, we start. We, I might have to start taking notes because I may not understand something. I may not be able to understand. Like if I want to know, hey, what are all the appropriations that are set up here under subtitle B forestry? I might have to like take notes and write them down. Mm -hmm. So now my reading is slowed down. So the, you know, assume the reading is if you're reading like say just, a novel. Right. If yeah, I'm just reading, reading a, through a this story. Yeah, I'm not trying to bend I don't, it like it. Assuming it's all laid out, right. and I understand as I'm reading it what right. this means. Yep. So the more that I have to try to reference stuff, the more that I have to think about stuff, the slower that my reading uh, mm -hmm. process goes. So it would actually probably take more than an hour to read through this bill and understand it because I'm going to have to reference other bills. I'm going to have to stop and think about stuff in a way that I'm, I'm unless I read bills on a regular basis, I'm going to have to stop and think about them in ways that I don't norm normally have to do okay. that. So then we get back and we talk about like, hey, 40 words per minute typing. So I find that pretty fascinating because with 40 words per minute typing, that puts it at about eight and a half hours to write. And assume for a moment, that's if you know exactly what you intend on writing. Right. Okay. It's eight and a half hours if I know. So imagine that we're writing up a bill. We're trying to figure out something. Well, Somebody had to go and they had to look up uh, what was shown on the screen here. They had to look up the National Agriculture Research Extension and Teaching Policy Act of 1977. Because they have nothing to, to make sure that's the correct reference. They right. have to, you know, all that right. type of stuff. Right. And then we have to determine um, other things that we might want to put in here. So like we might have to say, okay, well, what kind of appropriations do we want? So then I might have to go and find somebody and say, okay, what kind of appropriations? I might have to deliberate. So maybe I, I talk to you and you mm -hmm. say, hey, let's do $8 billion. And then I talk to Fred over here. And Fred says, mm, man, we're going to need 10. Like, and, need yeah. 10. Mm -hmm. and so then we have a conversation about it. So that slows things down, right? So the writing process isn't going to be as a, a simple eight and a half hour procedure. Right. Right. Because you don't just, you know, one person isn't writing. Even if you have multiple people, multiple people if you have multiple people that are writing and saying like, okay, you know, this team over here is going to work with Title One Agriculture. And this team over here is going to work with this particular portion. Right. Um, and, and so on and so forth. And so I look at it and I say, at the very basic, the easiest possible way, if you're just typing this up and you know everything that you're going to say, it's going to be eight and a half hours. And I find this fascinating because, you know, when we look at um, when, when we look at the actions on this, and so let me go ahead and post this. Uh, let, me, let me put this up on the screen if I can get it up on the screen here real quick. 
All right, so we have it up on the screen here. And so now if we go over here, we can see where this bill is. And then we can scroll down a little bit here where we want to go to. We want to go to do, 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 down here. So we can look at the actions overview here. And the actions overview say that it was introduced in the house on 927. So sometime prior to September 27th, mm -hmm. somebody had to sit down and write this. Well, how long did it take you to write this? And what was, and so I find this fascinating because I want to know what went into this? Mm -hmm. What was the genesis? Because this all happened before September 27th. How long before? Before that. When, right. when did you start, when did somebody come up with the idea of this bill mm -hmm. and say, I would like to forward this this idea for a bill? And then how did they determine that, hey, this bill, um, let's put it together, and then it ends up being over 2,000 pages long, right? So what is that process? And that's important because this is the build back better. So when did they start this bill? Was it started a year ago, two years ago? I mean, right? Were, were like they, this, was it, these are was the questions that I have. Was it already being written out, waiting for this opportunity that right. it could be shoved through? Right. Uh -huh. And and I and I I tend to think that Congress sits around. I don't want to say they sit around, but they no, they, they around. go around and they uh -huh. find reasons to write up bills, and then they have either portions of bills or bills written that. When there's an opportunity, they cobble something together or they take this whole bill that's already been put together mm -hmm. that they've been waiting for an opportunity and they say, now we're going to try to pass this bill, which is important because that means it's not really a response to an issue. It's a it desire. Is, it is a before. desire to wait for an opportunity to happen. Okay. We don't have to get into any conspiracy theories about whether they create situations for that opportunity. We can simply leave it at. They're taking an opportunity rather than responding to the actual real needs well, of what's Americans, going on. Mm -hmm. right? So where are you going with? That's okay. what I went with. That's where I went. All right. So I looked it up and I'm reading a summary and I'm going through it. Here's what's covered topic wise okay. inside of this bill. Okay. Um, now you have to bear with me for a second. Okay. The management of the national forest system, referring to job placement and career services. Okay. Safe drinking water. Energy efficiency and weatherization projects, electric vehicles and zero emission heavy duty vehicles, public health infrastructure, right? Supply chain resiliency, housing rental and homeowner assistance programs, cyber security programs, tribal infrastructure, housing, environmental and health programs, wildlife prevention, well, wildfire, wild wildlife prevention is a little right. bit different. Wildfire prevention, drought relief conservation efforts, climate change research, small business assistance and development, transit services and clean energy projects in low-income communities, infrastructure and administration of the Department of Veterans Affairs, establishes programs to provide up to six semesters of free community college, mm -hmm. free child care for children under the age of six, free universal preschool services, health benefits for eligible individuals who reside in states that have not expanded Medicaid. Establish a methane-free fee for certain petroleum and natural gas facilities. Expand Medicare to cover dental, hearing, and vision care. Provide certain aliens with a path to permanent res resident status, meaning those who enter the United States as minors. Provide up to 12 weeks of paid family and medical leave. Restructure and increase the tax rates for certain corporations and high-income individuals, meaning individuals with income over $400,000. Require the Department of Health and Human Services to negotiate maximum prices for certain brand name drugs under Medicare. Man. All of those things are somehow in this one bill. Right. So here's what happens. We don't get a chance to know what any of these individual right. things are. Okay, if these are that important, make them stand on their own. Yeah. Make them pull right. each thing out. Let's argue and debate where these are right. at, and then we vote accordingly. This is what happens when you get these omnibus bills that just take over, right. and they lump. So many of these things have nothing to do with each other. Right. These are just things like what you're saying. Right. We've been sitting around. We've been really wanting this. These are things that we get to make people happy, and we start throwing it in. So right. here's what happens. You have a bill that says we want to take care of these issues. Okay. And then this guy over here goes, I'm not signing on to that until you give me this. Right. Okay, we can fit that in here too. And then as you start playing this game, this is what it turns into. Right. And now we're having a thing that how do you tear this apart? Right. How do you break this down? You, there's no way that we as people can go, 
okay, let's get into this a little bit. It's almost like they have a desire to keep us uninformed, to keep us uninvolved. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? Because how do you attack this? How right. do you justify this? Right. How do you look at this and go, yeah, right. I, I think this is a good right. idea. Even if we step away from the libertarian argument that the government right. shouldn't be doing any of this stuff, the reality is, like, if you take a more conservative approach, you can look at it and you can say, hey, this is kind of ridiculous. And you can actually, you, even liberals, you know, the more liberal-minded uh, people, mm -hmm. you, you know, and, and centrist, they should look at the same thing and, and look at it in the same way and say, hey, this is ridiculous. How do I know that I agree with that, right? Like, maybe maybe out of, I, I don't know, like, maybe because... out of 20 things— there's only like five that and they I, agree with. Right. Or five but they disagree with. But in order to get my five, I got to take on 15 other things right. that I don't want anything to do with. But right. they don't care. Right. There's my problem. Like right. you're saying, this was not necessarily beneficial to individuals and people of the country. Right. This is beneficial because I want this. Right. And I found a perfect time right. as you know an elected representative that now I right. can get my stuff in. And, and I'm agreeing with you that I this is not a party issue. Right. This is not I'm a libertarian. Go, this is horrible things. Right. No, who looks at this and goes... Yeah, I think this is the best way right. for our government to be kind of forthright and transparent. Right. That we can kind of go through things. Notice that these might all have their merits. Right. Um, I don't think they all do. Right. But they might. But here's what I'm trying to do. Pull those apart. Separate these. Right. Let's, let's vote on these type of things right. so that then maybe the people or right. the representatives have a right to go, okay, you know what? I don't know how we feel about this. I don't know how my people feel about this. Right. We got to pull this out we, right. and, and, and go and debate it and argue it and pass right. it the way it ought to be done. Right. Instead of this big train wreck of right. a mess. Right. And I know. Absolutely. And then I think the the other, you know, kind of tacking on to what, you know, yes, libertarians will probably disagree with all of it. Right. For yeah, one, one reason or another. Mm -hmm. um, but at least at least make the argument harder. That's like it, right. It, like like say, hey, here's this one thing. And I might look at it and I might say, you know, I might get my libertarian mode and say, okay, government doesn't belong doing it. And then I read it and I go, well, there really is a problem here. Mm -hmm. there, there is a problem that needs to be addressed. And so now that conversation needs to be had. How do we address this problem? Maybe it's not the way that it was presented, right? Maybe right. there's another idea. Uh -huh. But we don't get to that. Well, we idea. don't get you don't get to right. that because it's all what what right. like what part of this do you yeah. go in and argue? And and here, I'll appeal to people's patriotism here. America is supposed to be the best. And I often look at this and I'm like, this is really the best that we can do? Like this? Mm -hmm. That's the best? Like we're America, yeah. we're the best. The best we can do is to cram a whole bunch of things in a bill that barely anybody has read. It doesn't seem like anybody's really argued much about it. No, not and, at all. And we just somehow managed to get the best idea the first time. The first time, right. Every it, time. When does, how does, like, who makes that argument? But, like if you realize when I did this, I was not arguing libertarian stance i was right. not i did not make a single argument about these things i don't agree with right because as i argue against things other people argue for them right okay. so i'm not like i said i'm not even looking at this bill in a partisan way i'm looking at it why do we have all this junk in one bill that, right that's my complaint about this right because there's a lot of things i don't agree with right but they're not going to be debated they're right not gonna, and you know what's funny i think if you separate these things i think there'd be a lot of things that don't get passed right oh yeah because i think there'd be a number of things people go no i'm not down for that right like i, I don't want that i'm against it. and they might even get vocal about you know who they're to their representatives no don't vote for this yep but that doesn't happen inside these things yep so you got anything else no i'm good I, all right so that's our bill review for this week uh hr5 was it 5376 uh let's see 5376 yeah 5376 the build back better bill and it was over 2000 pages long i sure as hell didn't read it tub didn't read yeah, it nobody uh, did none of your congress members that have signed it probably have read it either um unless you know maybe they might have yeah, read yeah. A, I'm, a, a I'm, going, I'm going they did sometimes people read a little bit because they want to highlight the one thing that makes them look they, good. they can go on they're talking like, points like, oh, yeah. because of this right here the part yeah. they like but yeah. as a, as a rule of thumb they probably haven't read the entire thing most americans haven't read the entire thing and yet we're going to pass we're going to spend you know billions of dollars trillions. one one it's trillions. right right it was trillions but I, I only pointed out one item the first item yep. 10 billion dollars you know i had to take a second look because i wasn't used to seeing that many zeros right. yeah like, you did look at it like, like no it's like, billion that's a b like, and isn't it funny how we don't even think about b's anymore right like if, if somebody says millions we're like okay whatever right. now we're at a point in our government spending if it says b right all right so what's the answer now, now we're dealing with t's yeah what's the answer I tell you what the answer is. When they vote yes on this, you fire them. You kick them out. Yep. You say, "Oh, you like to vote for bills, huh? That 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 nobody knows anything about." Well, guess what? You can't vote for a bill anymore. And that's our bill review. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, 
or send me an email to libertydadpodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to libertydad.com or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out.